I'm Todd Dyer with the Tacoma News Tribune here with Aaron Fentress of the Oregonian. And we're going to talk about this weekend's game between number two, Oregon, and number 23, surprisingly, number 23, Washington. And Washington has been pounded repeatedly uh, by Oregon, eight-game losing streak at this point. Aaron, do you, let's start with this. Do you think the Huskies have a shot in Austin on Saturday? Um, they have a shot, and as much as any team in the conference seems to have a shot these days against any other team, I mean, it seems to be a pretty balanced conference. Um, but uh, realistically, I say it would take a lot for Washington to win at Oregon, let alone anywhere. I just think the Ducks are too athletic, too fast, too good on offense, and their defense is actually better than the offense this year, probably. And, and what do you think of um, Marcus, his debut here at the helm for Oregon these first five games? You know, he's shown a lot of promise, a, a lot of ability all the way around, accurate, uh, great grasp of the offense, uh, very good runner. He, he reminds me a lot of Dennis Dixon from a few years back in terms of the entire package for the spread option. Uh, way better runner than Darren Thomas. However, he's nowhere near the passer Darren Thomas uh, was at the end of his, of his career. And he's only a redshirt freshman. He turns uh, 18, excuse me, he turns 19 later this month. So he's really young. He's been growing into the position. So I've given him a, you know, a, a B just basically because he is just a, a redshirt freshman. If he had been a, a veteran, based on some of the mistakes he's made, I'd probably give him a C, but I'm going to give him a little bit of benefit of the doubt. They haven't faced great competition, but he's looked sharp at times, and rust, or not rusty, but young at others. And you spoke about the defense. I actually spoke to Nick Eliotta, and what, what are you seeing from those guys? Obviously, we when we talk Oregon in general, you don't talk defense right. very much, but... He's under a very uh, interesting set of circumstances because they play so fast. Everyone worries about how that affects the opponent, but obviously that affects him too. He told me essentially what he does is like he's they're like a hockey team and they change <laughs> lines as the game goes along, um, yep. and they have to be prepared for all those snaps. What have you seen from them this year? What do you like about what you're seeing from them? You know, just I, I would say that this is the best all-around defense they've had in a while in terms of from top to bottom. Uh, having a lot of depth, a, a good size, and athleticism. I mean, they're fast. They're faster than they've been in the past. Some of the, the speed stuff with the Ducks has been hyped up a little bit in the past because those guys go to the combine and they don't run all that well. <laughs> but it's the way they play. It's the style they play that's fast. But this year's defense actually has a lot of speed over there. Um, and they're rotating the second really a lot for the first time in a long time they've always rotated the front seven so they're able to keep their guys fresh because they know they're going to be on the field a long time i think they were last in the conference in time of possession last year at around you know 27 minutes whatever 26 minutes um that's by design they don't want the ball long and so obviously you want to wear down the other team's defense but in turn you also wear down your defense so their defense is built to withstand what their offense is going to put them through and for, i mean they're you know they're 22 deep easily on the defense right now on top to bottom and, and all those guys can play yeah, do you think their uh, defensive depth is improved? He he told me that you know he doesn't have that kind of depth every year, even though they have to play that number just to keep people fresh. But it sounds yeah. like their depth has improved, and it sounds like the speed you're referencing is something that I've kind of seen on tape. They're able to close really fast if there is a completion right. or if someone gets loose a little bit. Yeah, definitely. You know, they've obviously used depth in the past, but they haven't had this collection – of experience, depth, and athleticism at the same time, in my estimation, especially on the on the D line. I mean, you're talking about Isaac Remington and Wade Kilakipi and Ricky Hamuli and, and uh, Taylor Hart, and you got Eric Armstead, a youngster. You got Dion Jordan, who's a, a backer slash and that's six guys who all can flat out play. <laughs> and Tony Washington's pretty good too. I mean, they just they just keep coming at you in waves, and so because they can stay fresh and they know they're going to probably play 80 plays a game. It, it allows them to be faster and quicker all over the place. And, and this, to me, is the best group backers they've had, I think, since you know I first, first started covering the Ducks in 03 or 04, and that took a few years off. But you know, Deion Jordan is going to be an NFL outside linebacker. Kiko Alonso is going to be an NFL middle linebacker at you know, 6'4", 245. I, I had a scout call me about him back when he was a registered freshman. I wanted to know why he was in trouble because they, they were already monitoring that guy then because he's so big. Michael Clay is probably going to be a late-round pick and a, a smallest linebacker, but he's got athleticism. Bosco Lacombo is going to be an NFL linebacker. He's, he's 6'3", 230. So that collection of backers with that, that depth of D-line and then those DBs running around back there really makes us a special group. you have any sense if Clay is going to play or not? 
Clay says he's playing. He said the other day, and I'm sure you know how secretive the Ducks are with their injuries. You guys have become uh, subjected to that as well, right? Yeah, yeah. The Huskies like, definitely yeah. trying to join that bandwagon. Yeah, everyone's jumping on the ship, Kelly, a secretive, secretive bandwagon. Um, but he, he practiced the other day. And he, he came out and gave an interview. Usually when a guy's injured and he's probably out, a lot of times they don't talk. Mm-hmm. Um, he talked. He was asked, point blank, are you playing? He says he is. Now, that could be a smoke screen because they like to hide those kind of things. But right. he seems sincere, so we'll see. And Justin Autzen, well, actually, second halves. Chip Kelly kind of passed this off. Uh, during the Pac-12 conference call this week as, you know, it's coincidence that we blow out people in second halves over and over and over and over, and everyone yeah. else doesn't think that it's coincidence. What, what is your take on what they do in the second half, and why do things tend to change then? Well, they weigh you down, and, and they make great adjustments. You know, this the Ducks' offense over the years, if you, if you took the personnel and put it in a regular system, a pro style system with huddles, <laughs> you know, they're not going to score 45 points a game, not even close. Um, but because they're able to come at you in, in a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different angles, create space, spread you out, get their speed out in space, and to run the plays they run at such a relentless pace. I mean, they're incredible. I, I mean, I find it fascinating how they run a play, they get up, they look to the sideline for like a nanosecond, and then boom, they're on the ball. The quarterback punches his hand down, and boom, the ball snaps, and everyone's going in unison. I mean, that's amazing to be able to pull that off over and over. And if you're on defense and you have to keep up with that, you're going to battle fatigue, not just physically. Forget that. It's the mental fatigue. You know, the physical part is going to make you even more mentally weary, and then you're going to make a mistake you're tired or we're in great shape because they practice like this anyway, right? And all of a sudden, you make a wrong move, and there's DeAnthony Thomas in space. He's fresh. You're tired. You're confused. He's gone. And that's just what they do to you. And so it takes time sometimes to wear people down like that. A lot of teams, I did a story the other day, you know, a lot of teams in the past few years have hung with them by halftime. Well, first of all, it's only 30 minutes action. It's, it's easier to blow someone out in 60 minutes than 30 minutes. That, that makes mathematical sense. But the reason why it falls off the cliff in the second half is because the other team comes out of the locker room at halftime feeling like they've already played the whole game. And the Ducks come out fresh because they've taken guys and they're in control. And then all of a sudden, it just, it's a snowball from there. And, and then next thing you know, they score three straight, three, uh, three straight touchdowns like they did against Washington State, and it's over. And, and how do they get DeAnthony loose and get him to the edge? What are kind of some of the aspects of their offense that they use to get him out there um well you know they'll, they'll straight hand up hand in the ball sometimes in, in situations but they like they like to run them in reverses they'll run uh tunnel screens to him they'll, they'll um they'll pitch the ball to him off, off triple option um and, and sometimes they'll just you know run a straight you know sweep so to speak and hope they get the edge block and he can just turn the corner and those are the type of things where you know the dive read option obviously if the end crashes down, the quarterback's going to keep it. If the end doesn't and you give and a backer makes a mistake and the, and the first level is blocked, once he hits there, because everything's spread out, once he hits there and gets through the hole, like in the, in the Rose Bowl, two backers for uh, Wisconsin made a mistake and flowed toward LaMichael, and DeAnthony hit the hole, and there was no one there. And then it was him and a safety. The safety was you know 10 yards downfield, and DeAnthony just ran right by him. So those are the kind of things they try and do to make those kind of mistakes. And once Because once DeAnthony gets in the open field, you're just, it's like Rocky won when he was chasing the chicken. I mean, <laughs> you can't catch the guy because he's just too fast. Greased lightning, I believe, is what Mickey eventually went to. He wanted to turn rock into greased lightning. And that took a while. <laughs> so uh, I think we're in agreement that Washington's chance, there, there's something there, but it's mild. Uh, do you have a score that you're willing to put out there? I I published on in Tuesday's paper, 44-20. And my biggest thing is not Washington's defense, really. It's Washington's offense. I mean, they're ranked 107th in the country, I think, um, scoring 20 points a game, which isn't horrible. But you're going up against a team scoring 52. And if your offense can't sustain drives and keep Oregon off the field, then that just compounds everything. So Washington's defense, and they're struggling to keep the ball in, and go on six, seven-minute drives and keep Oregon off the field, then you just going to give Oregon a bunch of opportunities. You can give them opportunities in, in good field position, and it just snowballs from there. So I, my biggest concern is for Washington is not its defense standing up to Oregon. It's its defense standing up to Oregon because the offense isn't giving it any help. Yeah, I would agree. It's an, it's an odd flip that we've seen here. They were so atrocious last year defensively, and 
now, uh, and everyone expected Keith Price and Austin Safarian Jenkins and Kaysen Williams, who have picked it up a bit, at least Kaysen has, and Austin Safarian Jenkins has been pretty good most of the year. He was kind of quiet against Stanford. But, uh, right. yeah, everyone expected more points from them, and they just kind of haven't found it yet. So, like you said, it'll be interesting to see if they can hang on to the ball for a while and do something while they're hanging on to the ball because, right. it, yeah, if they just end up kicking a few field goals, it could be uh, big trouble very quickly for them. Exactly. Well, Washington State the other night had a, had a nice six-minute drive where they went down and got a field goal, and another six-minute drive where they went down and got a touchdown. They got fortunate on the kickoff return. Maybe I mean, that's a great play, but that helped their offense a lot. But those drives, you go down and you get points and you eat five or six minutes up, that's two possessions for Oregon. Yeah, right, <laughs> you know, right. That's two possessions you kind of took away from Oregon, or at least you know, one or two you took away um, and kept them off the field, and you got points. And you have to be able to do that against Oregon or you're in big, big trouble. All right, great. Well, that will do it. Aaron, thanks for your time, and we will look forward to Saturday's game and seeing you down there. All right, man. See you in Eugene.